I mean, I went through everything yesterday, but I didn't exactly do much theory crafting besides, oh my god, what is that, and what is this, and holy shit. So, let's take a look at this together, shall we? Right, so, changes to the commander skill system. <laughs> says, in the near future, there will be an ST of the updated commander skill system. At the moment, we plan to update the skills in 0911. We will conduct several stages of testing and will closely monitor your feedback. So much for 10.0. Uh, <clears throat> new skills were added and some of the old ones were changed. Uh, now each class will have a separate section with unique skills. Maximum skill point number increased from 19 to 21. Now this is the first thing that a lot of people actually really wanted since a long, long time. If I could just have just just get one just one more extra point, this would have been an awesome captain. But goddamn it, war gaming, I can't. Well, now you're getting two. So this is really going to <clears throat> increase the amount of crazy options that you can go for and that you can do. Um, so yeah, I mean, I won't say that I'm not looking forward to this, but this is really going to change. A lot of things um, because very often you take skills that you wouldn't take um, because you're lacking points for something more important how much elite commander experience is this going to cost uh, or experience to go from 19 to 20 and from 20 to 21 I'm afraid to think um, are they going to readjust the experience? So it takes you the same amount of experience from 1 to 21 as much as it now takes you from 1 to 19. I don't know. <clears throat> or are they just going to increase exponentially the last two? Uh, I don't know. 19 will be automatically 21? No, I don't think so. Um, also, <clears throat> a new way to get elite commander experience. Uh, dismiss unused commanders. So apparently, if I understood this correctly, uh, yes, you did hear Meow. Um, if you have a commander that has any experience on it, like, I don't know, uh, it's a seven point commander. So it, whatever experience takes to get a commander from zero points to seven points, uh, you can dismiss that commander, just like you can dismiss it now, but you will also... Um, you will also get the XP in the Elite Commander Experience Pool. Uh, we're going to go through everything uh, together, but I think... But it's not for free and you won't get all XP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, we'll go through the details. I think they mention it later uh, in bigger detail. Uh, but you're definitely going to be getting more than you're getting now. I personally have way too many captains that I'm never going to use. That are like <clears throat> 3, 5, 7, 10, 9, 8, 12, whatever um, uh, skill points. Which is going to be nice to dismiss all of them and take the just take their elite commander experience. Uh, the amount of experience required to retrain a commander to another researchable ship is reduced by half. So, right now, I think if you want to retrain a commander that's um, 19 point, it takes you 250,000 XP, if I'm not mistaken, to retrain it. Um, for 200,000 credits, you can cut it to half, and then you need to use like another 125,000 to do the rest. I think so. Don't, don't take my word for it, if these are exact correct numbers, but... From top of my head. Or you can use like, I don't know, 500 gold for Insta Retrain. Or you can do it for free and then do 250k, um, you know, grind. <clears throat> if and when the changes come to the live server, everyone will have the opportunity to reset their commander skills for free. Now this is something that a lot of people are actually uh, very often excited about. And every time this happens, they're like, yes, finally, now I get to do all of my commanders for free. <clears throat> If you're like me and you have 406 ships in your port, or 400-ish ships in your port, and about 5 times as many, if not 10 times as many commanders, uh, this is not something you're kind of looking forward to. <laughs> because when this changes hit, I'm going to have to retrain every bloody single one of them. 
at least for all the tier 10, 8, 7, 9 and stuff, you know, the, the ships that actually play, um, th this is really going to be a nightmare. Not to mention that our commander um, spreadsheet is going to have to get changed and updated and that's going to take a, that's going to take a while. So yeah, game. I'm kind of excited about it and I'm kind of, oh my God about it. Uh, Shire, thank you for nine. Yafar Senior, thank you for seven. Winter Shin, thank you for the sub. Welcome to the team. And Brains, thank you for 15. Right, let's continue. Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay, skills already existing in the game will be adapted to the new system in as comfortable a way as possible. Yeah, we have a neighbor with his A10 again. I was hoping he wouldn't do it now because... You know, it's past 2 p.m., but he doesn't care. Uh, all right. So skills already existing in the game will be adapted to the new system in as comfortable way as possible, uh, taking all changes into account. Thus, players will not have to necessarily redistribute all their commander skills as they will already be trained for the skills most similar to the ones they were trained for in the old system. So this is kind of a good, bad situation. The good situation is Wargaming is literally going to retrain your commanders themselves. And they're going to pick whatever you had before as similar as it is after the change. Which to some people, this is going to be amazing because they're not, they're not going to have to deal with the, with the actual changes. If what Wargaming decided to pick was really what you had before... And if, if what you had before is actually what you want to have after. However, I'm skeptical about this. But, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, main changes. The commander skill system in its current form has existed for a long time. The last time major changes to the system were made was a few years ago in 060. And we're in 9... We're talking 9011 years. So that's a really long time ago. Since then, new mechanics and many ships with unique gameplay style have been added to the game. Uh, taking into account these and many other factors, we decided to update the skill system to better match the current realities of World of Warships. Right. Many skills in the game are not suitable for certain classes and individual ships, uh, which greatly limits the variability of the builds. I do like when, when you talk to Wargaming... Uh, and you and you tell them stuff like this that they deny it. They always have an excuse. They always kind of have a denial, and they always find a, a, a way to to basically make you um, make you be the one that's wrong, and uh, be them that you know they're in the right and you're in the wrong. And then whenever they decide to finally implement a change, they say. Oh, you know, many skills in the game are not suitable for certain classes and individual ships. Wait, what do you mean? What do you mean they're not suitable? You've been, you've been telling us that they're fine, that they're perfect for a long time now, did you not? I'm, I'm not taking this particular example, uh, but it's like that with literally everything with Wargaming. You try to tell them that something is wrong and they keep denying and justifying it. And then when they finally decide to change it, if by God they do... Uh, then they admit that it was wrong. But I'm like, why couldn't you say that it was wrong before, but you just don't have the time to do anything about it or something? Which is also bad, but at least we know you're aware of it. Uh, in such conditions, there were not as many effective ways to distribute skills as we wanted. Uh, these changes will help players not only to allocate skills to match their playstyle, but also to try new tactics. In the new system, each commander will have an opportunity to distribute skills for each class separately this is something you need to uh, remember uh, this is one of the major changes that's coming um, basically every captain you have will have four separate maybe five in the future four five separate um, skill trees you will have like if it's an if it's a 21 point captain for example you will be able to use those 20 po 21 point captain for a destroyer and then different for a cruiser and then different for a battleship and then different for a carrier. So each one of your captains will be capable of commandeering all classes without having to retrain them. You will be basically able to move them between four, well, to my understanding, 
if they don't change too much, this is supposed to mean you can have it trained, for example, for a Des Moines as a cruiser, for a Gearing as a DD, for a Midway as a carrier, and for a Montana as a battleship. And all the premiums, of course. So this will significantly, uh, this will significantly increase the number of ships you can cover by fewer amount of captains, which means that all of you who have special captains, such as John Doe, Kuznetsov, and whatever, uh, their their value is suddenly going to go up by four or five times, because instead of just for example, you know, you take a Kuznetsov and then you're like, what am I going to put it on? Kremlin. Okay. But then when you're not playing Kremlin and you're playing something else, um, like Sm uh, Smolensk or Moscow or Stalingrad or something, uh, you still want to have that Kuznetsov because it's broken. Let's be honest. It's kind of unfair advantage over all the others. Um, but you can't. This way, to my understanding, you will be able to have it on like all four classes, five in the future if they introduce submarines or when they introduce submarines. So this is a really, really nice change because they will be trained to only one tech tree ship or not. Per class, I believe. Per class. Because there's no way that they're going to do all of this and then let the captain be only trained, for example, for a gearing. What's the purpose of having cruiser build, battleship build, and carrier build if your captain is only trained for a DD. My guess is that you're going to be able to pick four ships in four Speaking classes to basically keep cover your spirit everything. Up. Thank you, Falcon. Will do, man. Thank you for 16. Uh, but let's continue. We have also improved the interface and functionality of the system. For example, you can now assign a commander to different classes without having to redistribute skills. There we go. Uh, we have also significantly... Uh, changed and reshuffled the skills themselves, added new ones and removed some of the old ones. The skills have been changed so that in each row there is a choice between several effective options instead of one ultimate skill. But you will need to retrain Captain every time. Okay, I guess we're going to find that out eventually. Uh, but that doesn't make a lot of sense though. Uh, although they did say that it's gonna, they're going to cut it by half. So, I mean, you still benefit a lot, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, have you always wanted to pick just a few more skills? Now as skills are becoming more specialized and their total number is increasing, the maximum number of commander skill points is also being increased from 19 to 21. Wait, I'm still subbed to you? Oh well, here's to another month of seal clubbing. Seal clubbing. Thank you for 13, Colonel. The repast appreciate it, dude. Uh, distribution of skills by categories will become a more logical, which will help help to match the skills of the chosen style of play. All right. There will also be a new way to get elite commander experience in the game. Players will be able to transform part of the commander's experience into elite experience when dismissing him. Arapo Mafia, thank you for three. Welcome to Silver and Argon, thank you for four. So 25% 20, of the experience earned at the cost of one experience for 10 credits. 25% of experience earned at the cost of one experience for 10 credits. I'm not even going to try to do the math here. Um, I'm guessing it's not very profitable, <laughs> but it's better than dismissing commanders and not getting anything. Or 50% of experience earned at the cost of 150 experience per uh, one double loon. Uh, maybe it's just me, but this is this looks very very weirdly written, like very very fucking weirdly written. Um, but I'm guessing in the future they're gonna give us an example. Uh, thus, you can demobilize unused commanders and spend the gain elite experience on training, redistributing skills, or retraining the commanders you need. Details about the changes: Commanders will still have a specialization for a particular ship. Uh, only one skill set corresponding to a class of ship is active at one time. Now, this is what I'm guessing you guys were mentioning. Because here it says, commanders will have a specialization for a particular ship. Let's say it's a gearing. Only one skill set corresponding to a class of a ship is active at one time. So, for destroyers, if it's, if it's trained for... 
um, for a gearing, it will be, you know, the DD uh, skill tree will be active. The skills for each class are distributed independently from each other. For example, a commander with 10 skill points can distribute 10 points in each section of destroyers and 10 points for battleships. The basics of skill distribution will not change. Each section will have four rows of skill, so tier 1, 2, 3, 4. To access the next row, you will have to learn from a skill before, uh, from the previous one. That's just like now. The cost of learning skills increases with each row, just like now. The cost and number of skills for recruited commanders will change, so that if necessary, the player will be able to recruit a commander with a large number of skill points. So if I'm getting this correctly, they will give us options to recruit commanders which are more than just 0, 1, or 3 Bitter. skill points, which is nice. Time flies, bro. I remember when there were only 150,200 people in stream on a good day. Congrats on your continued success. Keep up the great content. <laughs> I love how he wrote, how he read 150 to 200, 150,200. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, I wish I could remember the day when we had 150,000 people, uh, only 150,000 people watching. Thank you for 22 months, dude. Appreciate it. Tom Grok, thank you for the sub. Welcome to the team. <clears throat> so, Commander without skills is hard for free, just like now. Commander with six skill points is available for 900,000 credits. Uh, now you can literally get, if I'm not mistaken, for free, Bitter. zero. For one skill point, you will get, uh, I think you can buy it for credits, and for gold, three skill points. Now they're increasing it dramatically. Commander with 10 skill points is available for 1750 double loons, and six point for 900,000. Penguin, thank you for five gifted subs, and Cheerful Saint, thank you for five gifted subs as well. You guys are rocking a hype train, I see already. To redistribute the skills as before, Elite Commander Experience or Double Loons will be required. Each skill section is redistributed separately. But, uh... The cost of redistribution for a section with a commander with 21 skill points will be 525 Double Loons. Now it's 500, I believe, or 450. Or 500,000 Elite Commander Experience. For 19 skill points, the cost remains unchanged. Bitter. Ericon, thank you for five as well. Um, right, so this is a bit confusing. Just a tiny little bit. Because each skill section is redistributed separately. Now, I know that they might just mean... Like one, once you retrain a captain, you will have to redistribute the skills Bitter. for all sections separately just like you did it at the beginning or they could mean that you need to retrain the captain like what four or five times i hope that's not the case i hope it's the first one uh a commander with no specialization for a specific ship cannot be assigned to it without retraining Bitter. this rule is not applied to premium or special ships you can go into battle on a ship without a com wait what what you can go into battle on a ship without a commander. In this case, commander experience will not be credited to the account. Why? You can literally have a commander for free. <laughs> Give me one good reason why you would implement this. Seriously, commander without skills is hired for free. Why the fuck would you go on a battle without the commander? I don't get it. You don't even need space in uh, in your in your port or barracks or whatever you call it for the for the captain. You put it directly onto a ship. It doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't make any sense why you would do this. If they removed commander without skills is hard for free completely, then I would kind of understand, but that would just be a dumb decision. That that's really ridiculous. But then you're getting no experience. I mean, of course. The amount of experience required to retrain a commander to another researchable ship will be reduced by half. I don't know how this is true when they mentioned this. 
like in this the costs remain <laughs> unchanged morgan thank you for six uh welcome to gold uh some of the things are worded pretty pretty weird here uh hold on okay this is retrain that's probably just regular training the cost of uh, of commander retraining changes since redistribution of commander skills will be required much less often well if you allow us to basically not have to retrain it every time we try to move it from a class to a class then yeah the cost of retraining in doubloons will increase from 500 to 750. The list of updated skills is available here. Okay. Well, instead of clicking here, which I mean, I'll click just to show you, it's uh, it's very confusing, as you can see. Uh, this is the way the wargaming does things. Uh, we have a much more organized spreadsheet, which somebody not from wargaming actually made it. Uh, maybe Wargaming should be taking some notes, I'm just saying. So, it's guitaristing, yeah, in case you were wondering who did it. Here, we have carriers, battleships, cruisers, and destroyers uh, to go through. They started with carriers, so we will start with carriers as well. Uh, this is all the available uh, tier 1, then tier 2, then tier 3, and tier 4. Captain skills Tarv, thank you for the sub. So, all the tier one. I'm not even gonna read their names Good because time. they changed a lot of names and they're pretty ridiculous. Um, I mean, we can, whatever. Aircraft mechanic gives you aircraft restoration time minus 5%. I do believe we already have a module like this. I'm not sure if we actually have a, a tier one right now. I don't know all of these by heart. But we'll see. Read the wargaming. Half a year and three right more section. for first baby flamber hands flamber hug. Thank you for the great time. You mean these explanations? Base concealment is the detectability range by. Okay. Uh, engine mechanics. Engine boost time plus 10%. It's this time of the month again, so take my prime sub, Mr. Special Streamer Lal. Mm hmm. Appreciate it. Thank you for 11, Mayor. Engine technician. Reload time of the engine cooling consumable minus 20%. So, you know, it recharges 20% faster, I guess. Uh, damage control specialist. Reload time of the damage control party consumable minus 10%. Not sure why we would need this on a carrier, but okay. Cap specialist. Number of fighters in the ship launch squadron plus one. And patrol expert, action radius of patrol fighters, plus 10%. Tier 2, torpedo bomber specialist, torpedo arming distance, minus 10%. Okay, so torpedoes will be able to get dropped closer to the ship. Um, well, I mean, that's a nice buff for carriers. Not much, 10%, but I'm very skeptical when it comes to buffing carriers. Torpedo Armament Specialist, Aerial Torpedo Speed plus 5%. So these two things will work nicely together. You can drop it closer and they will be faster, giving ships far less chance to actually evade. Engine Expert, Cruise Speed of Squadrons plus 2.5%. Repair Specialist, Number of Repair Consumables plus 1. That's a heal. And Action Time of the Repair Consumable plus 10%. So longer and more heals. Expert AA Gunner, flak damage plus 10%, that's not very useful, but continuous AA damage plus 10% as well. So this is like BFT, I take it. The only difference is it's, it's an actually tier 2 and not a tier 3 skill, but this is for carriers. So, okay, don't really care. Interceptor, time before patrol fighters become active, plus 50%. So, wait a second. 
time before patrol fighters engage the target minus 80 percent action time of the patrol so they literally oh my god this is this is so like war gaming they're gonna come up with such a ridiculous answers and solutions to a to a malfunctioning and broken mechanics that don't make sense so if i'm reading this correctly and you can correct me if i'm wrong um this right here means that we are aware that once you summon your fighters uh they're they're a bit special and it takes them forever to actually engage the target so instead of fixing this stupid thing how about we just introduce a new captain skill for example that's gonna make them be active 50 percent faster and And they're going to engage 80%. So, like, this is... The first part that's a bit... That's a bit confusing is... It says, time before patrol fighters become active 50%. So, you would think, by only reading this, that once you activate the skill, it's going to take them 50% less to um, arrive and basically engage the target. But then they say, time before patrol fighters engage the target minus 80 percent so what does this mean they're gonna arrive at the area 50 percent faster and then they're going to engage 80 percent faster longer time before patrol fighters engage the target minus 80 percent uh okay so time before patrol fighters become so, okay, wait, 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 wait. It's going to take them 50% longer to what? Reach the area you designated, but then once they reach, they basically immediately engage the target. 80% faster. That's so ridiculous. That's literally ridiculous. <sighs> Okay, forget anything I said. It's still stupid. It's still fucking stupid. It takes them forever to reach, to reach and engage now. Uh, now it's gonna take it fifty percent longer. Forget it. Typical war gaming, making something useless, even more useless. Now, now I'm actually going to have to pay for. Th oh my god. Anyway, expert marksman. Aiming speed of planes plus seven and a half percent. I'm guessing the reticle. For example, when you're dropping bombs, the reticle will be 7.5% faster, fully aimed. And torpedo planes and rockets. Okay. I guess this is good. Piercing armament. Now, here's where I start having real problems with, with, with these skills the carriers have. AP bomb damage plus 5%. Who the fuck thought the carriers needed to do more damage? Like, Richthofen right now does, what, 26,500 damage? 26.4 or something like that per drop if you take this skill I, I'm not gonna do the math you do the math for me but 5% more AP bomb damage and then of course 5% more rocket uh, damage as well because 26.4 is clearly not enough and, and 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 doing like six to ten citadels with rockets is clearly not enough now we need more damage on it 27.720. Oh. Oh. Pyrotechnic. Pyrotechnist. HE rockets. HE rocket fire chance plus 2%. Great, that's what we needed. Oh yeah, this is this is good. HE bomb fire chance plus 5. This is great. This is great. Did, see, when we when we said when we came and out and said to Wargaming, listen, the, the rocket plane, you, well, the plane or carrier and ship interaction is not, is not good. Uh, they were like, what do you mean? It's, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's broken. It's not working as intended. They were like, oh, okay. Oh, oh sure. Okay. No problem. Uh, we'll, we'll make it better. Don't, don't you worry about it. We'll give AP bombs and AP rockets more damage, and we'll give HE rockets and HE bombs more fire chance. Is it, is it working now? Is it better? Yeah. You're welcome. This is great. 
this is actually fucking great. Aircraft HP per ship tier plus 25. 25 HP. Wait, what does this mean? Per plane or per squadron? Glad Wargaming has listened to the community. Yeah, I'm like super glad. I know this is survivability expert for carriers, but is this 25 HP per plane? Per tier. Per plane. So if we go to tier 10, this is going to be 250 HP per plane. And if a, if a squadron has, for example, like 10, 12 planes. Yeah. Okay. What was it now? Was it 350? I think it was actually 350. Not 250. Was always like that? Wasn't it 350 per... Uh, three three fifty is ships. Uh huh. Okay. And two fifty is per plane. Even now. Okay. <laughs> Aircraft engineer damage taken by continuous AA minus ten percent. Oh, of course, less damage to planes by continuous AA. Number of patrol fighter consumable plus one. Okay. Navigator Bombardier, uh, cruise speed of bombers plus 5%. Wow, this totally doesn't seem a valuable skill considering it's a tier 4. This seems a bit uh, too expensive, I would say. I mean, if they put 10 or 15 or 20%, I'd be like, fucking hell, that, that, that's a lot. But it's a tier 4. It's only 5%. This doesn't seem to belong in a tier 4. But I'm not going to complain that it's a tier 4. Fuck yeah. Put everything in a tier 4 for a carrier. Ruthless. Enemy torpedo protection damage reduction. Enemy torpedo protection. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? How does a carrier influence my torpedo protection of my fucking ship? What's the logic in that? What is the logic in that you gotta be joking now i'm definitely gonna get flooded every time i get hit oh my god bro and it's 15 fucking percent dude it's not like five it's 50. oh god help us god help us against carriers close quarter specialist <laughs> Secondary battery maximum firing range plus 20%. Secondary battery maximum dispersion minus 30%. <sighs> Stealthy. Ship, ship's detectability range minus 15%. Wait, 15? Everybody else gets 10, but they're gonna get 15. Well, I mean, everybody else gets 10 now. We'll see if this is gonna change. Reload time of the damage control party consumable minus 20%. Aircraft return time plus 50%. Wait, aircraft return time plus 50%? What does that mean? They're going to go supersonic when they're returning to the carrier? So, hold on, hold on. For four... Oh, slower. Well, hold on. Aircraft return... Oh, plus 50% means it's 50% um, longer. Yeah, okay, I always get confused with pluses and minuses in Wargaming's de uh, description. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. I was about to say, like, holy shit, they get a concealment, they get a damage control party, and they get, like, super fast planes returning back. This should be, like, a seven-point captain skill. Okay, so 50% slower. Uh, well, that is definitely not worth it. Senior aircraft engineer. Damage taken from... <laughs> <laughs> it's already useless. <laughs> Come on, dude. It's all flak is already useless. 
in like 75 to 90% cases, flak is literally freaking useless. And now 33, now when, when that 10% cases happen that you actually fly into the flak, at 33% less damage. And remember, if you fly into the flak now, as it is, um, you basically don't, um, y you don't die immediately. You need to fly into the flak twice. The first time your planes get very damaged and then the second time they get shredded. So now you're basically buying yourself a third time. The only good part about this, the only good part about this is these are actually aircraft carrier skills. I, I hope we're not going to see this. Eight is great. Your RNG will oh, be it actually doesn't today. matter. It doesn't Have matter. Fun. It doesn't matter. I thought like, you know, if, if cruisers and battleships and others get it, but that, that, that makes no sense. This is for planes. This is not for carriers. This is for carriers, planes. So yeah, this is going to influence everybody. Nice. GG Wargaming, GG. GG. Uh, I, I'm just waiting for more invulnerability somehow, somewhere. Focused. Action radius of patrol fighters plus n kilometers. What the hell does that mean? Patrol fighters can no longer spot enemy ships. So you increase the radius of patrol fighters. Will be determined later. Yeah, I, I, I know. Obviously, but it's like... Well, this is definitely not going to be worth it. Why would you do this? Why would you do this? Why would you pick this? Unless that action radius is going to be like twice the size, where you can literally cover three, four squares. You're not going to want to do this. Like, occasion don't get me wrong, occasionally... I can see a use for this, maybe in, in like professional competitive gameplay, um, where the your team is going to rely far more on fighter protection than scouting from the fighters. Um, but in a random battle, I don't think anybody's going to be wasting any points for this. You're just going to use the fighters to to sc I, I don't know, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I guess that's what Wargaming wants, after all. Is maybe. People will do it, and, and some, some will, some won't. Roqueri, thank you for eight months, and Rauder the Magnificent, thank you for your magnificent prime. Appreciate it. So. Great. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten. So, like, ten, fourteen. 18, I'm just, I'm not even looking where I'm going. I'm just like 18 and then like 21. So you can take three, four tier skills, two, three tiers, one tier two, one tier one. Ooh. So I would go for this, for example. Most likely. Keep trucking, mister, and don't let WG or the player base spoil your fun. Thank you, Brevgar. We'll try, my dude. We'll try. Thank you for 19. I mean, this is also nice for a carrier. It gives all your squadrons plus one plane. So your squadrons will have an extra plane. Um, they will do more damage. They will, they will be faster. They will be faster. They will take less damage. They will take less damage. They will have more HP. They will... Do okay. Um, let's see. Well, between this and this... Oh, this is only for fighters? How do you know? Number of... Oh, number of fighters in the ship launch squad... Okay, never mind. Then we'll go with this. Aircraft mechanic. Uh, torpedo arming distance minus 10. Aerial drop torpedoes plus 5. Cruise speed squadron. Number of repair consumables plus 1. Flak damage plus 10. Um, okay, so that's 1. Let's do the... Let's do the calculator thingy. Just so we have an idea, so... Okay, hold on. No, I actually have to put it somewhere where you can see. Eh. Annoying. Shit. Well, actually, this is only for me. Fuck it. You don't need to see it. <laughs> so, we have one. 
Then we have um, two with this one. And then we take this one. So that's plus three. And then we take Uh, uh, let's take this one. That's another four. I killed the lights last night again. And now they're working again? Yeah. Magic. Um, and then, I don't know, let's take this one. So that's another four. That's 14. And then we're going to take this one. That's 17. Um, <coughs> well, what else could we do? Which one did I go for tier 2? I went for one of these two. We're going to go for the other one now. So that's plus 2. That's 19. And then I could go for another tier 2. That would be, for example, this. And that's 21. Or not go for these two or these two. Take one of these two and then take another tier three. Like this one. I mean, this absolutely. This is going to be absolutely, yes. Less damage, more HP. These two are very nice um i mean not mandatory if you're really gonna do the pre-drops all the time and you count perfectly um i am doing it in my own time now digger if you don't like it don't watch um if you don't want if you want to do like the pre-drops and you just want to basically go and um one strike and you calculate basically from experience uh, how much exactly, how many planes you need to, like, drop. How many planes you need to have as a cannon fodder to do that one drop. Then you basically don't need, um, you don't need this. And you might just go for these, for example. Uh, but gen generally, I think th these two are going to be the ones you're doing. Uh, this, maybe. Uh, this... Well, depends on your skills on dodging flak. If you can dodge flak, you don't need to bother yourself with this. If you can't, then definitely take it. Uh, no. Uh, no. Unless you're super crazy. And... Uh, let me it. Yeah, this is, this is going to be basically mandatory. This is simply too good in comparison to everything else. So this is the only tier 4 skill that I would really be, like, interested in taking. So, 4... Um, seven, ten, twelve, <coughs> fourteen, fifteen, and then you can take these two as well. Oh my god. Oof. Okay. You're gonna be able to make these, these planes very, very powerful. And that's exactly those two extra, extra skill points. You can take this and then you can take all of these. Like all four. That's 12 and 16. And you take these two. And that's 20. And you take this. And that's like 21. Yeah, that's very powerful. That's, that's very powerful. Alright, moving on. Battleships. Let's see what else we got. Loader. Type to switch... Time to switch shell type minus 50% if all main battery is loaded. Okay, that's um, expert loader now, I believe. A cube, A period. Um, let's see, pyrotechnic, technist, main and secondary battery, HE shell fire chance 0 0.5. Wait, so now we can increase the fire chance by half a percent. And it used to be 2%, I believe. Was it? 2 or 3%? But 
it used to cost like three demolition expert now costs like three now and this way is gonna cost only one so less powerful but far more cheap two percent but it's a tier three skill yeah i know i know so you lose one and a half percent which is a lot but it's it's super easy to take okay uh reload time with the following consumables minus 10 percent main battery reload booster torpedo reload booster spotting aircraft fighter defensive aa why why is there no hydro and no radar listed here for example i mean not a lot of battleships have this but some do why would you not include all consumables yeah, I'm not even going to talk about the main, uh, the torpedo reload booster on a battleship. Um, do we even have a battleship? I don't think we have any battleship yet that has torpedo reload booster. Is this Wargaming's way of telling... Oh my god. They're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. I know it. I already fucking know it. The only question is... Ah. Uh, okay. Emergency repair specialist. Reload time of the damage control party and repair party consumables minus 10%. Okay. Well, that's pretty fucking good. For only one skill point, you're gonna be able to get both heal and Damacon 10% faster where now you would have to go for what is a jack of all trades to get just five percent and it's a tier two skill now you're getting these two for one skill and it's double okay that's pretty good number of aa gunner number of flak bubbles per salvo plus one for only one skill point okay maintenance specialist Risk of main battery turrets, torpedo tubes, engine, and steering gears becoming incapacitated 30%. Whoa, so not only main batteries or secondary batteries and flak, now you get main battery, torpedo, engine, and steering 30%. This is great. For only one skill point, this is actually pretty good. Gunner. Main battery gun traverse speed plus 20%. Secondaries and AA were never there. Uh, not in a captain skill. I, I was basically thinking about the, uh, the module. The tier 1 module that you have. Sorry. The tier 1 module that you have. You have to choose between secondary and AA. Or main battery. And here with maintenance specialist. You kind of get everything. Um, it's just something that's happening inside the head. Uh, gunner, main battery gun traverse speed plus 20%. So, that's... Instead of expert marksman? That's a lot. Wait, how much do you get now? Now it depends on the caliber. Now it depends on a caliber, I believe. 0 0.7 degree per second yeah now it's in degrees mm, I'm not sure what that means emergency repair specialist is minus five not a minus ten are you sure because it says minus ten here you can even check it here name description parameter Wait, hold on Zip. Cruisers, battleships. <sighs> battleships skip tier. Oh yeah, it says minus five percent here, so it's uh they actually did a mistake. Reload time of the damage control party and repair party consumable minus five percent and it says ten percent here. Okay, so I guess in copy pasting they made a mistake. Although I don't know how you can make a mistake in copy pasting, but I guess they were just typing themselves. Um, okay. Well, that changes things a bit, but still, you get you, you get both for, for a tier 1. Plus 20% gives Yama only 0 0.6 degrees per second. How is that better than the current 0 0.7? Well, I didn't say it's better or not. I asked. 
Uh, but that's Yamato, for example. 26 seconds for Kremlin is insane. Thrashing. Armor penetration of main and secondary battery HE shells. Plus 25% fire chance before other... What the f... Armor penetration of main and secondary battery HE shells. Plus 25%. Fire chance before other... Plus 25% fire chance before other modifiers is halved. So this is what? IFHE as a tier 2 skill on a BB? They really want us to shoot the HE with BBs, don't they? <laughs> Jesus Christ, this game is going literally in the opposite direction of what we would like it to be. Yeah, and secondaries as well. So now if you want to go like secondary spec, this is going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, it's it's very useful for secondaries. Because currently you have to the, you have to take four skill points um, to do IFHE. Now, two points. There you go. Okay. Consumables expert. Action time of the consumable of the following consumables plus ten percent. Hydro, radar, smoke, smoke, and engine boost. Reload time of the following consumables minus ten percent. Main battery reload booster, torpedo reload booster, spotting aircraft, fighter defensive A. So these consumables will reload faster. These consumables were simply last longer. Hydro longer, radar longer. There's literally one ship in the game, and that's and that's Missouri that has a radar um, as a battleship. Correct me if I'm wrong. Smoke generator. Uh, that's literally one ship in the game that hasn't even been published yet. That Italian premium. Uh, so it's Hydro for like German, uh, German BBs and what is it, there's maybe a British one, and an engine boost. Uh, okay, but damage control party and repair party are not affected by either of these two. But here you have reload time of the damage control and repair party minus 5% separately. Okay, well, it says 10, but it's supposed to be 5. Argus Eyed shows the number of enemies aiming at the ship with their main battery guns. Oh, so now this is, uh, what is it now called? Priority target? Why did they change the name, for the love of God? And now it's a tier 2 and not a tier 1 anymore. Because this was literally what everybody was taking on all classes, all ships as a tier 1 skill. I took it only on cruisers, pretty much. Um, now it's a tier 2. Mm, we'll see. Although, this is for battleships. I don't know if cruisers are going to have the same thing. Uh, I personally don't use this anyway. A gunner training expert. Priority sector reinforcement damage plus 20%. Additive with the base plus 35. Uh... <sighs> Isn't this AFT now? Isn't what they... Or manual? Sorry, manual. Manual AA, that was four skill points. They changed it into this, and now it's two points, right? I think. Vigilance. Torpedo acquisition range plus 25%. Vigilance used to be... Three skill points, I think. Okay, armor piercing, AP shell maximum damage plus 5%, fire duration on own ship plus 40%, flooding duration on own ship plus 40%. Whoa, this is, this is like seppuku, dude. This is literally not good. But you know what's gonna happen now? Every mother trucker that likes to be considered that he's a natural born sniper, a Vasily Zaitsev incarnation that likes to stand in the back and snipe, is gonna take this 
and then when somebody shoots him, he's going to insta repair. And then when somebody shoots him again, and and literally sets him on fire again or flood him, he's gonna burn. He's gonna burn a lot. Which is good thing for us, I guess, but bad thing for us if they're part of our team. Because they're going to be dying 40% faster, just so they could do 5% more damage. Uh, I don't know, this seems like a lot. Like, like really, really, really a lot. Five. It's only 5%. I mean, I'm glad that you can do a lot more damage and it's only 5%, but Jesus, the penalties are pretty freaking high. God damn it, neighbor. Turn off the 810 already, will ya? It's 3 p.m., dude. It's 3.10 p.m. and you're drilling in an apartment building. Uh, secondary armament ball. What are these words? Ballistician? Ball ballistician? Ballistic? Oh my god. Somebody, somebody truly special was naming these. Secondary battery, maximum firing range, plus 20%. Uh, okay. That's what the AFT was until now. Same here, my neighbor is crazy as well. Oh, they got no, no, like, literally, look at this shit. Secondary battery, okay, so this is a tier 3 and it, I think it used to be like a tier 4. Adrenaline rush. Oh, adrenaline rush is now a tier 3. Reload time of all armaments per 1% of HP lost, minus 2%, AA continuous damage. Okay, Adrenaline Rush is now going to be more expensive. Survivability Expert, fire duration on the ship, minus 15%, flooding duration on the ship, minus 15%, time to repair and capacitations, minus 15%. Uh, okay... Expert AA Gunner, flak damage plus 10%, continuous AA damage plus 10%. Steady, torpedo protection, damage reduction of the ship, plus 10%. Wait, torpedo protection reduction. <laughs> so... They're not technically increasing your torpedo protection. They are technically reducing... Where is it? This. Right? <laughs> Enemy torpedo protection damage reduction. Minus 15. Torpedo protection damage reduction of the ship plus 10%. It is just weird wording. Uh, I think it's actually just 10% more torpedo protection. Uh, okay. Marksman. Maximum dispersion of the main battery minus 10% if there is no visible enemy within the ship's base detectability radius. Base detectability range is the value seen in port. So if my detection, if I'm a battleship and my detection is 12 kilometers, as long as there are no enemy ships with my, within my 12 kilometer detection range, my volleys will be 10% more accurate. I love how Wargaming keeps pushing battleships further and further in the back and rewarding sniping. I just love it. I absolutely love it. So, the more the time passes by, the more the time passes by, they are literally pushing ships further in the back away from each other so they don't basically shoot so they don't basically fight so as as a dd or anything like that yeah he's drilling again i i hope this doesn't continue throughout the entire stream where i'm gonna fucking snap um so to to, to basically expect any sort of uh support from your team especially battleships, is now going to be that much more difficult. Because as long as there's no visible enemy ships within the ship's base detectability radius, which is like, I don't know, 12, 13, 14, whatever, um, they have a better concealment. 
And that's actually says visible, so he could be behind the island. He could be behind the island, five kilometers away from you. You can't see him, you get a better, uh, better accuracy. Okay, interesting. Secondary armament expert. Maximum dispersion of secondary battery minus 35% on the designated target. So this is manual, uh, manual secondaries. Okay. Straight A artillerist. Wow, somebody really like to go with this ballistican bullshit and artillerist shit. Reload time of secondary battery minus 10%. Reload time of main battery minus 10%. If an enemy is visible within the secondary battery range. So if if an enemy sh if I take this, an enemy ship is within my secondary range. Not only that my uh, secondary battery will reload 10% faster, my main battery will reload 10% faster as well. Uh, this is really brawly. It's still 4 point, but half the dispersion. Yeah, this is, this is pretty good for brawlers. Like, for people that like to play like me. But the problem is, there's way too many tier 4 skills that you kind of need to take in order... Uh, no, sorry, you don't need this. Uh, these two. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Emergency repair expert. Action time of damage control party and repair party consumables plus 10%. Action time of damage control party and repair party. Okay, so longer heal. Number of the damage control party and repair party consumables plus one. Oh, they, they found a way to make Kremlin even stronger. Of course. Of course. It, it's, it's, it's amazing just how a third of all the skills you read or a quarter of all, quarter of all the skills you read literally just ring Slava, Thunder. Slava, Slava and Thunder and Kremlin. It's amazing. That's literally amazing. Concealment expert. Detectability range of the ship minus 10%. Ah, oh, so carriers get minus 15, but battleships get 10. Fire prevention expert. Risk of catching fire minus 10%. Maximum number of fires on the ship reduced to 3. Okay, holy shit. Um, yeah, this is going to be a bit tougher. So, let's see. Uh, main battery reload, torpedo reload, fighting fighter defense, and now reload time the damage control party. Everybody can okay, so let's take this as number one skill. Uh huh. Main battery gun traverse, armor penetrate. Yeah, let's take this as a number two. Uh, shows the number of enemies. Vigilance. Mm, okay. Secondary armor, secondary battery. Yeah, let's take this as a number three. Well, this is AR. We'll see. Fire duration of this ship minus 15. Flooding duration. Okay, we'll see if we can spare this. Uh, no. And then we'll take uh, this as a tier four. So that's plus four. And then we'll take this as another four. Action time of the damage control part, blah, 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 blah. Um, okay, so I have a full secondary spec IFHE battleship with 14 point captain. We have better accuracy on my secondaries for the designated target. We have the reload time of secondary battery and main battery minus 10%. Uh, we have more range on the secondaries. We have more penetration on our HE, main and secondary. And we have... Uh, emergency repair specialist. I don't know how loud this is actually for you, but there's literally nothing I can do about this. Okay, so that's 14. That leaves us with another 7 skill points. So we could take another tier 4 and another tier 3, for example. So, we could go for Adrenaline Rush, or we could go for Survivability Expert, and Concealment. So, Fire, Flood, 
and incapacitations minus 15 percent with emergency repair specialist of damage control and repair party minus 10 percent on the cooldown and concealment so you can you're going to be able to be a relatively decent survivability uh build ship with concealment and on top of that have full secondary build or you can go even crazier you can ditch survivability expert and go with adrenaline rush uh not to mention that you can always ditch concealment expert and then um i don't know go go something something okay there's definitely going to be options there's definitely going to be options you're going to be able to do to go for 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 a pretty badass battleship build all right let's move to cruisers Gunner, main battery gun traverse speed plus 20%. Main battery gun traverse speed plus 20%. Uh, okay. Torpedo man, chances of causing flooding plus 20 Why does a cruiser need this war gaming? Why? Because of your precious fucking Yoshino players? 30% chance of... Uh, uh, Torpedo man, increase your chances of causing a flooding to the friendly uh, destroyer by 30%. Yeah, I know you can't flood a friendly, but Jesus, that's literally what this is. That's literally what this is. Kitakami, yeah, great. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, this is literally Kitakami. Oh my god. Reload time of the following consumables, minus 10%. Main battery reload booster, torpedo reload booster, spotting aircraft, fighter, defensive A. Loader, time to, sh time to switch shell type. Minus 50% if all main battery is loaded, okay? A warning about a salvo fired at your ship from a distance of more than four and a half kilometers. Uh, right, okay. A gunner, number of flag bubbles per salvo plus one. Pyrotechnics, what? Who came up with these stupid words? Main and secondary battery, HE shell fire chance plus one percent so battleships get a half a percent cruisers get one percent hello smolensk and instead of three you have to uh, pay two and for battleships instead of three you have to pay one okay torpedo armament specialist ship torpedoes oh my god here we go again kitakami this is this is literally kitakami and yoshino i don't see why anybody else would be taking this and if you are Yoshino, please don't focus on torpedoes and focus on guns. But if you're Kitakami, this is going to be mandatory, basically. Google Translate came up with them, and I assume it sounds more badass in Russian. Yeah, probably. Consumable expert. Action time of the following consumables plus 10%. Hydro, radar, smoke, engine. So Kitakami has hydro, has smoke doesn't have radar i believe and uh okay spotting aircraft expert spotting aircraft expert what reload time of the spotting aircraft consumable minus 50 percent the number of spotting aircraft consumables plus two action time of the spotting aircraft consumable minus 50 percent so they reload 50 percent faster you get two extra charges but they lost 50 percent shorter well, this is perfect for me because occasionally, I'm, I'm never going to use this, don't get me wrong, because this is shit, but um, occasionally when I do want to use the, the spotting aircraft, they stay in the air way too long. Uh, this way they would stay 50% less. Uh, so now, now, now they're promoting sniping with cruisers as well. I mean, they've been promoting sniping with cruisers for a while now, but they continue. Argoside shows the number of enemies aiming at the ship with their main battery guns. Again, priority target as a tier 2. AA gunner training expert. Priority sector reinforcement damage plus 20%. Tier 3 skills. Demo man. HE shell damage plus... HE shell damage! 10%! Oh, come on! Come on, man! You're joking! You're actually joking! <sighs> Sub shell damage plus... <laughs> because that's what we need. We needed Sub to do more damage. Yes, Wargaming. 
Brilliant! Brilliant conclusion. Sap definitely needed more damage. That's what we needed. All those destroyers that survive on like 2000 HP after one volley from Sap, not anymore! <laughs> this is great. This is great. Ship's detectability plus 15% if main battery caliber is larger than 149. Well, if you're a small lens, don't worry about it. Ah, don't, don't worry. We're, you're, we got you covered. You are protected. All the biggest toxic, toxic pieces of shit are basically protected. Every single one of them. The only one that's gonna suffer from this is, that can come to mind is like Mogami 155s. That's, li that's literally it. That's literally it. If they did this, HE shell damage plus 10%, SEP shell damage plus 10%, ship's detectability plus 15%, with nothing anymore, I would say, at least there's a penalty, but as a Smolensk, you don't really care because you have, uh, you know, you have a smoke. But no, 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 no. We have to, we have to protect Smolensk, of course, of course. No bias at all. Flambaru in the chat. Torpedo man, demolition expert. Maximum torpedo damage plus 15% for a cruiser. Wait, why would you name this torpedo man demolition expert? I don't get it. Maximum torpedo damage plus 15%. <laughs> Ridiculous. Th this is actually 15... 15% more damage per torp. 5% faster torp. 30% more flooding. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Dude. They are out of their minds. They're literally out of their minds. They're preparing to... Uh, God. I, I feel like this is a backup plan if they ever needed to nerf Kitakami. They have a backup plan how to make it... Be, uh. Adrenaline rush. Feel the time of all armaments. Okay, same as a battleship. AP demolition expert. AP shell damage plus 7%. For calibers over 190. Does this include... 190 because they don't say for calibers of 190 and over it says only over 190 which means Donskoy won't won't benefit from this uh nevsky won't benefit from this either right and and a bunch of those he spammers donkey have 180 yeah okay you have to be over 190 millimeter to benefit from this. Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of cruisers that fire a lot of AP. So, this will come in handy. If main, cal if main battery caliber is larger than... <laughs> so, you could literally... You can literally increase the HE shell damage, the SAP shell damage, the AP shell damage, the AP dive bombers, the AP rockets, the HE dive bombers, the HE rockets, penetration of torpedoes. They're buffing damage all across the board for all classes, dude. For all classes. Provident. Number of consumables plus one. <sighs> okay, that's like superintendent, I guess. Uh, enduring ship HP, ship HP per ship tier plus 350. That's survivability expert, you don't really need it on most cruisers. Straight A artillery, artillerist. Reload time of main battery guns minus 8%. Reload time of secondary armament minus 10% if an enemy ship is detected within your secondary firing range. Okay. As long as you can take concealment expert. I don't see why you wouldn't take this as well. So you literally get 8% faster reload on guns. And your secondary is 10% if they're in your secondary range. So, okay. 
Brawler, ship speed plus 8% if there are more visible enemies than allies within the base main battery range. Base main battery range? So if you're a cruiser that has like 20 kilometers, that's half of the map. So as long as on your half of the map, there are more visible enemies than allies, and remember that a lot of times your... Does Wargaming really believe their servers are good enough for this? Because this is constantly going to change. Because you're, like, your allies are always visible to you, right? You have, like, three allies that are on your side of the map with you, so they're... You're, you can constantly see them. But there's, like, six enemies from which you can't see two most of the time, and two pop in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. So your speed is constantly going to go up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. For every ship in the game, if, if everybody has this, for example. Oh boy. Maximum dispersion of main battery, minus 10% under the same condition. Maximum dispersion of main battery, ooh. So they're, they're basically promoting solo cruiser play with this. Uh, so ships like Azuma, Yoshino, Atago, Zao, and all of these ships that like to be far away from action. And a lot of them like Hindenburg and Henry, like they like to be alone on the other side and kite. This is going to be a pretty, potentially pretty decent buff. Base main battery range is the value seen in port after upgrades and so Ooh, I think, I mean, it's a good, it's a very, very, very good skill because it influences a lot your main dispersion and your speed. But the amount of calculations that are going to have to be happening behind the scenes for this to work and not work for you to basically try and, and calculate when are you going to fire your guns and when not based on when ships are calculated and when they're not. I'm very surprised to see such a skill uh, that requires actual skill and situational awareness, like a lot. Because you could be reloaded and have a really good shot, but you know that in a second or two, one more enemy or two more enemies are going to be detected, which is going to make it that more enemies are detected than you have friendlies with you, which means suddenly 10% better uh, dispersion. So you delay your shots for a few seconds. Oh, wow. Okay. These are the kind of skills that I actually like to see because I'm just, I'm just worried about Wargaming servers. Can they actually, uh, you know, can they handle this amount of calculation? Uh, this is happening in 0 9 11. Uh, this is actually very, very interesting. Something that will actually require brain to use properly. Um, I mean, th this will be happening whether you use brain or not. So that's good for everybody. But if you're uh, a more experienced player, especially if you're playing in a division and somebody has a radar, you're like, can you please radar just to increase the amount of ships detected so that I can slap that guy a lot better. You know, stuff like that is going to be happening. Intelligence radio technician shows the direction of the nearest enemy ship, regardless of whether or not they are detected. The enemy will be alerted of this. So this is RPF. IRT. Oh my god. Uh, thrashing. Armor penetration of main and secondary battery HE shells plus 25% fire chance. Oh, so for cruisers, it remains a tier 4 skill. But for battleships, it's a tier 2. Okay. That's good. Concealment expert, minus 10%. Expert AA gunner, flak damage plus 15. Continuous AA damage plus 20. Ooh. So you get a flak and continuous. Wait, don't you get continuous now by like 10%? 
now they're putting it to 20 but 10% was uh, like BFT as a tier 3 skill and now it's going to be a tier 4 okay well shit cruisers definitely wow take a look at this this is good this is good this is good and you don't need it on most cruisers this is good and <clears throat> this is good you have five tier four skills which are all good for 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 cruisers they're literally all good so it's gonna be pretty tough to actually make up your mind which ones to go for however going yesterday through some of these skills and talking to some of the other CCs, we've noticed one very, very, very important thing. There's no more AFT. There's not. There's nothing. For now, this is all work in progress, of course. But for now, there's no way to increase your main battery uh, range if you're a cruiser. Fuck Smolensk. Smolensk has its own uh, ra uh, range module that he can go. But what about Atlanta and Flint? Atlanta and Flint have, I think, 11.3 uh, uh, kilometer range. And they're absolute nightmare, not to say impossible to play unless you have AFT. 11.1? Yeah, even worse. So, some of these ships are really going to get screwed up because of this. But like I said, this is still work in progress. This is early and I'm not, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be uh, surprised one bit if they, if they make more changes and introduce more stuff or change things like that. Um, and yeah, there is no fire prevention for cruisers. So all those big boys... All those battle cruisers, they're gonna burn more now. Huh. Okay. And finally, as a cherry on top, we come to destroyers. Let's take a look what they did to my babies. Main battery gun traverse speed plus 20%. Okay, so that's a tier 1 skill now. That's pretty good for all the German DDs. Torpedo Man, chances of causing flooding plus 30%. That's also pretty fucking good, and it's a tier 1 skill. Consumables Specialist, reload time of the following consumables. Main battery, reload booster, torpedo, reload booster, spotting aircraft, fighter defensive A, minus 10%. Okay, that's also useful for DDs at a tier 1. Uh, loader, time to switch shell type, minus 50% if all main batteries are low. Okay. Maintenance specialist, risk of main battery turrets, torpedo tubes, and engine steering gears becoming incapacitated, minus 30%. Okay, that's also pretty damn good. Um, that, that kind of can help you to not take, potentially, with modules and stuff, not having to take last stand. A gunner number of flag bubbles per sub plus one. Tier 2 skills, pyrotechnist. Uh, main and secondary battery HE shell fire chance plus one. Okay. Torpedo armament specialist. Ship torpedo speed plus 5%. Ship torpedo speed plus 5%. It's not five knots. It's 5%. And, the, and there's no... Um, there's actually no penalty. So that's nice. Consumable expert. Action time of the following consumable plus 10%. Hydro, radar, smoke, engine. Very nice. AP demolition expert. AP shell maximum damage plus 5%. Uh, okay. Some of DDs are going to be benefiting from this. Argoside shows the number of enemies aiming at your ship with a member and nobody cares. Propulsive. Uh, when the engines or steering gears are incapacitated, they continue to operate, but with a penalty. So this is last stand. Tier 3. Uh, main battery and AA specialist. Main battery reload time, minus 5%. Continuous AA damage, plus 10%. Ooh, okay. Expensive as a tier 3, but pretty decent. 
Torpedo Armament Expert, minus 10%. Adrenaline Rush. Threshing, aka IFHE. As a tier 3, not a tier 4. Ooh. Number of consumables. Ooh. Ooh. Number of consumables plus 1, Provident. Enduring, ship's HP per ship tier, plus 350. Holy shit, there's so many good skills you can take. Main battery and AA expert. Main battery, maximum firing range, plus 20%. Flak damage. Main battery, maximum firing range, plus 20%. So they did, they gave this to DDs, but they didn't give it to cruisers. Okay, so, so this is like AFT, basically. This is, this is basically AFT. Cautious. Main battery reload, reload time, plus 10%. Ship speed plus 8% while undetected. So you are 8% faster when you're not detected, but your reload time is increased by 10%. As a tier 4 skill, this is not worth it. This is probably not really worth it. I mean, if they put this as a tier 2 or a tier 3, sure. But to put... Uh, I mean, yeah, you're going to take this on torpedo boats. But is it really worth it? Four skill points? I don't know. Intelligence radio technician. Shows direction of the nearest enemy ship. Okay, so this is RPF. Fearless. Main battery reload time, minus 10%. Detectability range of the ship, plus 5%. Oh, so this is like, what was it? German Z52 legendary, pretty much. Main battery reload time. Okay, so... Gunboats that don't really give a damn about their detection. They're gonna have faster reload and a few hundred meters um, more, less concealment. Okay. Concealment expert is 10%. Nimble. Dispersion of the enemy shells fired at your ship plus 20% for the first 15 seconds of being detected. Whoa! Whoa! 20%! That's gonna make it exceptionally fucking hard to hit a DD with just about anything. Dispersion of the enemy shells fired at your ship plus 20% for the first 15 seconds of being detected. But this, is, this can be abused. You can literally get detected you show yourself you're detected they shoot at you their dispersion is potato and a half and then you go stealth hiding behind the island or smoking up or anything breaking cover for two seconds and then this is going to be resetted popping in and out yeah not to mention that when you get a radar this is this is actually really fucking strong and a very welcome change because when you are a DD and you get radared, uh, first of all, nobody can see you for six seconds, which gives you just enough time to basically start moving, to get in motion. And then everybody shoots at you, but this is still within the first 15 seconds of you being detected. So they, um, they're going to have a, a bad dispersion. So this is going to be absolutely fucking mandatory for a lot of DDs. Ooh. 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 Shit, man. I thought cruisers uh, had a lot of really good skills that you're gonna be like, oh, what am I gonna take? But DDs are even crazier. DDs are even crazier. So not all DDs are going to need this, but this is going to be nice as a tier 1. Um, okay, let's, let's go with this one. And then... Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, let's go with this as a number 2, but I'm also going to go... Mm, wait. 
Playing better real time, continue save damage plus 10%. This is very nice. Torpedo tube. I mean, this is for a gunboat, this is for a torpedo boat. And then a German rush. Threshing. Uh, some are gonna need this, some are not gonna need it, so it's. Some might, some not. Okay, let's take this as a tier 3. And then we're definitely taking this as a tier 4. We're taking this as a tier 4. Um, some some can use, some won't, but I don't think I'll be using this on many because I like my concealment. RPF, main battery real time plus 10%. No, main battery maximum firing range. But, um, okay, let's say we take RPF. That le that's 18 points, that leaves us with 3. And we took this, and then depending on which ship we are, are we gonna go AFT or more, I don't know, heal radar or torpedo? Ooh. Ooh. Wow, there's gonna be a lot of options. There's actually going to be a lot of options. Wow, uh, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. How many, uh, how many, because if I wanted to choose a, sh a skill that's like useless for DDs, this is not useless. Some of them are going to need this. Some of them won't, but this is definitely not useless. This is pretty damn good. Uh, main reload, uh, some, I guess. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. For DDs, this might not be the best thing, but. It can still find some use, but I wouldn't use it. Uh, this is decent. This, eh, not really, but eh. Uh, good, 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 good. Uh, but don't really need this on a DD, but a lot, I know a lot of people use it. Good. Mm, good, 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 good 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 all the tier three skills are good i could li i would literally take all of them if i could um some of them are gonna need this some won't uh this is one of the most questionable ones in my opinion i i, I don't really think you're gonna want to take this because it's way too expensive uh because of the penalty uh, even if it didn't have this penalty even if it was just this I don't know if it would if it would have been worth it the four points. So I think cautious is a is a big misfire. Uh, good, mm, questionable, or situational. Good, and this is just amazing. Just wait until they nerf this to like seven seconds and and five percent. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> You'll see. I didn't actually do it for cruisers. Uh, the the build. That we could go for. Let's take a quick look. Main battery, gun traverse, speed plus 20%. Uh, maybe. Chances of going. No. Some are going to be benefiting from that time to switch. Okay. No. Uh, I don't know which tier one would I take, to be honest. Maybe, maybe this. Oh, uh, that's a good one. No. Maybe. Uh, no. I guess you could take this as a tier 1, so you don't have to take this as a tier 2. I don't know how this is actually going to work, but... So as a tier 2, I guess this, or this. So that's 3. And then... Some light cruisers are definitely going to be benefiting from this. Heavy cruisers. This is permanent. Like, at the beginning of the game, you're immediately 15% worse concealment and you're, and you're going to stay like that. This is not only... Uh, like, if you shoot and it's above 149, then heavy cruisers could potentially use this. Otherwise, probably not. No. Maybe. 
Uh, some definitely. Uh, yes, for high tiers. No. So let's take this as a three one. That's another three. Um, I guess this is good. Ship speed. If wait, real time. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's take this one. Ship speed plus eight percent if there are more visible enemies than allies. Makes an dispersion of main battery minus ten percent condition. <sighs> Questionable. I mean, certain situations for some ships. RPF, FHE, and then we take that. And then we take, can I take that? Yes, I can take that as well. So that's 18. I can take another tier three. That could be, for example, this. Or this, depending on if I'm HE. Ah, light, heavy. Okay. Okay. Well, um, like I said at the beginning, this actually lasted quite a lot, but like I said at the beginning, this is going to take a lot of adjustment and a lot of um, time to think about it and process it. Um, and adjust and test. Uh, and God help us with a spreadsheet for the captain builds because this is going to change everything. This is literally going to change everything. Even the skills which are somewhat the same or completely the same, most of them or at least half of them have changed their uh, cost. So that alone is enough to make this a very, very interesting change. Not to mention that you no longer have 19, you're going to have 21 skill points. So, yeah, uh, this is still far away. This is coming in 0911. But I, I guess I'm excited about it. I mean, there's definitely things I'm looking forward to. And then there's things that I really am not looking forward to. But we're going to find out. Um, for those of you who are watching right now, I'm pretty sure you have the links. Uh, I will put the links right now for those of you who will be watching this on YouTube. There will be links down below. Well, you guys definitely let me know what you think.